Well, guys, after that, I literally have no predictions about what is going to come on next week's finale of the originals. Hey guys, Kevin Murphy, The Originals, Season 3, Episode 21, Give Him Hell, Kid, and I was really looking forward to this episode. I mean, the last two episodes have been really hard to watch, really. There have been some really emotional moments. There's been some really great stuff. I, I think there's been some really great performances, but it's been really hard, and this episode really seemed like it was going to be really crazy, and this was a really crazy episode, but a lot of it was really sad as well. I mean, I think something they did very well in this episode is not just get us to get on Marcel's side and understand why he is seeing the way things are, but also really feel bad for him, and at times side with him. I mean, he's really not wrong in this episode with what he's saying to Klaus and Elijah, because that's what most of this episode was. This was another amazing episode. I love this episode. Really set things up very well for the finale. Like I said, I have no idea what's going to happen in next week's finale, but let's just get into this episode. There's a lot to get into, and I love the way this episode starts out, because we start off with, we see a band playing on the street and a horse-drawn carriage pulling a coffin. Vincent reads a prayer, and they're clearly having a funeral for Davina. Elijah gets dressed for a funeral. Cole sits depressed, because he just can't even go to this, uh, you know, funeral. And Marcel and Joshua in their Sunday suits, too. Klaus walks with the other mourners behind the cart, and in the cemetery, Vincent speaks about vengeance being a lion. He stands with Cole, Josh, and Marcel at Davina's tomb, and Josh steps up, says he told her about her first, his first boyfriend, and he never told that tale to anyone else, and... If you remember how close these two were, I mean, we haven't seen Josh in a while. No, we haven't. If anything, I think he hasn't been on the season enough. I don't, I mean, Josh is a character that, yes, I care about, but he's never been a central character. Like, he's never been a character that is main. He's always been one of Davina's closest allies, but now, really, the question is, what role does he play? It really just seemed like we know what role he's going to play after this episode, but basically... Josh can barely speak, we could see, he says that she was like a sister and best friend and he loved her, and uh, Cole says sorry as he sobs too, he can't even say anything because he knows that he's the reason why Davina's dead, and <sighs> Marcel had almost a slip of paper, then folds it back up, says words aren't any good, he says the Michelsons must answer from this and he will make them, and he touches her head, still makes that promise, then storms off, and just like Klaus, he is going to avenge Davina, and Haley's in at the wake panicking about low whiskey supplies, Elijah joins her, says that Cammy would appreciate all this, she sees Klaus and asks Elijah how his brother is doing, because she's very concerned, um, about Klaus, obviously, you know, she knows that he killed Lucian, he knows, she knows that Klaus really is, re you know, reluctant about, not reluctant, but he really is dwelling on the fact that he shouldn't have killed Lucian, and we see Detective Kinney again this episode, which I'm glad, because here's the thing, Cammy was the only human in the show, and now we have Kinney, who I think is the perfect replacement for Cammy. I mean, if you remember Kinney and Cammy, we start off the season with them investigating murders, and it makes sense at the end of the season, we see Kinney again, Kinney approaches, says he recognizes Klaus and says he knew her, then asks if he did, and Klaus compelled him to forget him, if you remember, um, which I like that we remembered here. Kinney asks how she died, and Klaus says an accident. Kinney says he's not there as a cop, but to pay his respects, and we knew that Kinney knew too much. That's why Klaus compelled him, because he knew too much, and basically... Kinney pretty much, you know, he knew Cammy, but he didn't know Klaus, and he didn't know Klaus, but of course Klaus compelled him to forget him, so Marcel shows up, lays a flower with the others, he walks right past Klaus without speaking, it's the perfect scene of us just seeing how against Klaus Marcel really is right now. And like I said, something I love about this episode is that you really do get everyone's point. You get why Klaus feels the way he does, you get why Marcel feels the way he does. And Elijah advises his brother to give him time, really, that Marcel eventually is going to turn things around, but right now he's just really angry, and Klaus says that they ruined Davian to, see, to save themselves. Marcel's anger is justified. He can understand why Marcel is angry, and I like that Klaus understands that. He's not being a dick about it. He understands completely why Marcel is angry. Klaus says that he has to reach out to Marcel before his anger becomes something worse. He really feels that he can get through to Marcel, and that he'll be able to show him that he is on their side, and that they didn't mean for this to happen, and it's a really interesting thing that we saw here, I like seeing Klaus, you know, want to turn things around, because he knows he did wrong, he knows that he shouldn't have killed Lucien, he knows that Marcel feels really betrayed right now, and he really wants to make all that right, which I love seeing. So Cole shows up, finds Freya spilling her blood into a bowl. Cole asks if she recalls that Davina's funeral was today, and he asks if she skipped the wake for Cammy because of her guilt or is des or is uh, desiccating more dead right now, and looks at the skull. And it's true, Freya was the only one not at the funeral. She says that Lucian said the prophecy would still unfold, and she has the remains of his oracle, and needs to channel her and find out if the nightmare is open, because she obviously is terrified this prophecy is going to happen. She doesn't know how, but she knows that the prophecy definitely is going to happen, and because of that, she's trying to figure out how she 
she could possibly stop it or what's going to happen. And Cole says that he hopes it's true. They can all run. Hell, he's, a, he's sorry that he won't be around to see it. And... He's not at all upset. He thinks that they deserve it. And in many ways, he's not wrong. I mean, the family, they've been going through so much this season that, yes, it would be a tragedy, but in many ways, they kind of deserve it. I mean, after everything that's happened and things like that, it kind of seems like the best direction is for them to kind of get divided and things like that. Cole says that he's leaving. There's nothing for him there. He yells her to not lecture him on family. Cole says he never wanted her, no matter that she spent her life looking for them. He walks away, and he just doesn't want to be around them right now. You know, he feels that they've wronged him. He feels feels that they just that nothing good comes out of it and Kinney then talks to Vincent, says something is going on in the city. Vincent says the truth is a curse, and be careful what you wish for. And Kinney asks what happened to Cammy, and Kinney says that people don't just die. They are sick or an accident or someone kills them. He knows it's not just an accident, and he says that she's dead with no coroner's report or death certificates, and Vincent says he doesn't want to know. Kinney says he has to know and do something about it. He says he won't let it go because he actually really cared about Kim. If you remember, Kinney and Cammy kind of had a brief romantic thing in the beginning of the season, and Vincent says, come on, and he follows, and I really thought that Vincent was going to end up revealing stuff to Kinney here, and it really just seemed like, like I said, Kinney is going to be a much more integral part of the show next season. That's what it seemed like to me, Lisa. This really is setting up more for Kinney to do because Kinney, like I said, he seems like the right character to stick as the only human on the show. You need that human, just like the Vampire Diaries is Matt, which again, I don't think they do anymore, but the, the originals does need that human. You just do. It's just that kind of show. And, um... Josh is, is drinking. Marcel says slow down. Josh asks about his declaration of war against the Michelsons, and, and Marcel says he doesn't care. They should worry about him. He, he has the serum, and Josh says, oh, good, You'll, he'll die soon, too, and says he needs to get his suit dry clean for his funeral, and Josh reminds him that he did not work out well, that that, that did not work out well for Lucian. He thinks that Marcel is destined for death, that this is not going well for Marcel. If Marcel takes that serum, that... He's going to die, and he asks if Marcel thinks that's what Davina would have wanted. Marcel sets the bottle down, and at this point, it seems like Marcel doesn't really care what Davina wanted. He kind of just wants to do his own thing, which is interesting, and especially because when you think of what, you know, Klaus and Cammy, how Klaus did want to stake, you know, think of, was this what Cammy really wanted? I don't really think Marcel's thinking this is what Davina would have wanted. I think he's thinking more of, what do I really want to do here? So Freya tells Elijah it fades before she can see it. Then she gets a glimpse of something with teeth and muscles and dripping blood and gas and Elijah offers his hand for her to channel. She sees Marcel, then sees him hurting them. They are both horrified, and we don't know what this is. Elijah saw it too. Marcel killing them. Haley holding hope. There's blood on Haley's head. They see Marcel stay Klaus and a line of coffins, and... This is going to happen, definitely. I think this is setting up that it is going to happen, but I don't know if there's necessarily a way to stop it. I think they want to, but I don't really know if there is really a way to stop this from happening. I mean, it seems like something that is going to happen and something that they're going to have to face, but is there a way to stop this? I don't really know. I mean, this vision is crazy, seeing Klaus dead and everything. Again, you know the show is not going to kill Klaus, but we do know the season is going to end with Klaus having to leave New Orleans because we know what happened to the Vampire Diaries and that flashback and everything. So they see Elijah toasting with Marcel, then he attacks and Haley's looking at Elijah dead from an infected bite. Freya says that Vincent took the venom from Aurora and may have given it to Marcel, and Elijah agrees that they're in trouble and that there really isn't a way to stop this. So... From that flashback, from that, you know, flash, from that, uh, vision, looks like Klaus dies, Elijah dies, you can't just have everyone die, obviously. So Klaus finds Marcel drinking, and he says he missed him at Davina's memorial, and by far, in my opinion, the best scene in this episode are the ones between Klaus and Marcel, because you both get their viewpoints, you totally understand why Klaus is, you know, feeling the way he does, and why Marcel feels the way that he does, and he says he missed him at Davina's memorial, Marcel says they threw her to the wolves, and Klaus expresses condolences, Marcel says he had a chance to bring her back, but it wasn't convenient to before his family. Klaus says that Lucian had to die, and Klaus says if Freya could have killed Lucian and saved Davina, she would have, but she just couldn't. It didn't work that way. He had to do it, and Marcel said that there was another choice, and... Marcel asks what he is to him, and it's a great scene because Marcel really doesn't know what he is. He says, is he a friend? Is he a sidekick? Is he an ally? Then he says he doesn't treat him like one. No matter what he is, really, he doesn't treat him like someone who should be on their side. He treats him more like an enemy, and or even just, you know, an outcast, honestly. If I'd say anything, I think Klaus just treats him like just someone who really, he doesn't really care about, and Klaus says that they are blood and they fight, but are they, but they are family, so... 
it seems like Marcel is part of the prophecy from what Klaus is saying because we know it's one by friend, one by foe, and one by family. So I'm thinking that Marcel is that part of the prophecy that is friend because, of course, you know, it's if this prophecy is fulfilled, you will all fall. And I think Marcel is definitely part of that. So Marcel scoffs, then says, Once upon a time, Klaus was his mentor and savior and sire and has never been his brother, and now he's nothing to him. He doesn't care what he is. You know, now he's nothing, and Klaus begs for a chance to prove him wrong, asks Marcel to come with him. Marcel sighs and his tears on his face and it's just really sad because I feel like there's a part of Marcel that does but I think he knows he's just gonna get screwed over and Marcel and you know to Marcel Klaus is just very toxic he's not someone he should ally with he knows it's not gonna end well if he does ally with him and he pulls the vial of serum, follow Klaus out the door, and Freya stands with Cammy's body, tells Elijah it's all gone from Cammy's body. She says they have to warn Klaus. She says the ancestor power is faded, and she can't fight off Marcel if he becomes the beast from the prophecy, because in that prophecy, he does become this very savage beast, and she doesn't know she'll be able to fight him off. And Elijah says he'll find Marcel. Cole hears a music box and pops open and starts playing. He clicks it shut, then asks who's there. A matchbox catches on fire. He asks who's doing this. The door closes. Then he looks in the mirror, and Davina is there and chokes him and he says he loves her and didn't mean to hurt her she's gone and uh it's interesting the way he's seeing these visions of Davina we don't really know what this means but he clearly is seeing Davina why I don't know but he is and Kenny and Vincent then go to a house where his crazy ex-wife lived with him. He says she used to perform ritual sacrifices there. Kenny asks if voodoo and all that is real. Vincent says that witchcraft is supposed to keep things in balance, and he says that this place creeps people out. They're right to be afraid. He pulls out a box after knocking some bugs away. He tells Miss Crazy Ex Eva tried to siphon the power of the ancestors and made a mystical battery that can store negative mojo, and he says witches are supposed to protect New Orleans, then that the ancestors made a deal with Lucian, and that's why Cammy died. And he said and I like that he did explain this to Kinney. And you can tell that Kinney thinks he might be going a little bit crazy. He says the ancestors want the Michaelsons gone and they will stop at nothing. He says they have to use the dark objects to sever the ancestors tie of the city and stop them. And that's what the, that's the role the dark objects play in here. Klaus takes Marcel to the bridge and, uh, What's interesting about this scene is that, again, you don't know if Kinney necessarily believes him. Because think about all this. It's a lot to process, especially because Kinney didn't know all this stuff existed. It's a lot to process, but definitely very interesting. Klaus then takes Marcel to the bridge, which is really where everything goes down. This is really where Klaus and Marcel really just get to uh, express their viewpoints and really just get to deal with everything they're dealing with. But also a lot of really emotional stuff goes down this scene. Klaus takes Marcel to the bridge where he had him spread his ashes. He says this is the threshold between Marcel's past and future. He says they loved him as their family's newest member. And Marcel scoffs because he knows that he's just saying that. That Klaus is really only saying that to make him feel better and try to make him stay on their side and tell him, oh, you are family. Marcel thinks it's bullshit. You know, he doesn't believe a thing that Klaus is saying. And Klaus says that his hatred marks him as kin. And Klaus says when he bought him there to scatter his father's assets, he released his hate to the winds. And Klaus says that's when he knew Marcel was his son. And Marcel says that he is hoping that he would feel he owes him something. And Marcel says being part of his life is not been a gift and he paid back any debts and he paid back any debts he owed already he says klaus is the one in the red and that Klaus is the one that's drawn here. And Klaus says that he raised Marcel in his image, but then he began to distrust him and thought he would become his better. And Marcel says that never happened until he tried to hold him down. Klaus says he is not done enough when it comes to Marcel. Klaus says he will always be family. And, and I do think that Klaus is sincere. I think Klaus is genuinely saying, look, I haven't done enough for you. You've done a lot for me. I haven't really done enough for you in return. And I really think he is trying to open up, up to Marcel and say, maybe I will help you out more. And he then, but then he began to distrust him and thought he would become, basically, he asked what he's interrupting and it's an interesting scene, definitely. We then see SWAT comes into a shop where witches are chanting. Kinney leaves the charge, arrests the witches. Vincent is with him. Vincent grabs up some things from the room, asks if Kinney's okay. Vincent says the cemeterians, house of the spirits of the ancestors in sacred places, help them focus their energy. He says it's where the worlds touch, and he says he's going to go into their world, crack the foundation to cut off their tie, and Vincent says he needs Kinney to handle things on this end. Vincent tells him to clear the area. Kinney asks how he'll do it. Cole is there and says that Vincent has to die, and... <sighs> Honestly, I could see this happening because here's the thing. They said three major characters are dying. Now, Lucian was a very big threat, but he was not a major character. They said three beloved characters, and I do think Vincent is going to be one of those characters. Not that Vincent's a bad character, but I just don't feel he really necessarily plays a role after this season. I think he's done what he needs to do, and if Vincent does die, I mean, it might be the best thing to do. I mean, maybe he needs to die. I'm not really sure. But Kinney asks who this is. Elijah says they need to talk. Marcel says, asks him why he's eyeing him like a rabid dog. He says it's not his job to prove himself to Elijah, who says, tell me where it is. 
Marcel holds the vial and says this. Klaus looks at him with interest, and Cole says he won't love the ancestral world alone. He says he's coming along. And uh, Cole says Davina reached out to him and put and parts of her soul are left. And he says he has to see her and he's going to make sure that he has to see her one last time. Vincent says, come on, Cole, and they head out. Klaus asks what this, what it is, and Elias says, it's a wicked little gift from Vincent, and Marcel asks why they, says, you know, why not take it since loyalty didn't get him anywhere, and, uh, Klaus asks him to end this and basically just stop doing this. You know, he knows that he's on their side. He needs to stop doing this. And Marcel asks why this would change anything but would make him his equal, which honestly, yeah, Marcel's not wrong. I do think if Marcel would go on with what Klaus is doing, he would continue to be shunned. He would continue to be ignored. He would continue to be basically just, you know, not some kind of invisible. He seems kind of irrelevant to Klaus. I don't think that's what it is. I don't think Marcel is better or worse than Klaus. I think really how Marcel feels is that he's isolated. He feels isolated. He feels like he's not really a part of this family, and he doesn't really think it's going to do anything different. And Marcel reminds him he just said that they're family. Klaus said he handed over, and he will forgive him. And Marcel mocks him, says he thought Klaus came to apologize. Marcel says Klaus always has to be the king and says they eventually all fall. And he's not wrong. Again, Klaus always wants to be in power, and... The lights flicker on the bridge. Marcel is in the same light that Elijah saw in the prophecy, and he looks really scared because he knows the outcome of this. He knows what could possibly happen, and he's freaking out because he knows what that prophecy showed. And again, we don't know when that prophecy is going to happen. I'm going to say that prophecy is definitely going to happen. So Josh meets Vincent Cole, and Cole and says there ain't no party like a cemetery party. He brings Davina's favorite record as they asked, and Vincent tells Cole they will have to move fast to conquer Davina and take out the ancestors with the bomb. Vincent drinks some hemlock, and Josh calls it old school, says respect. He holds their hands to anchor them, and Vincent chants, and... Sorry, guys, I have a really, I have a lot of allergies. I'm sorry like that if I keep, sorry, I keep rubbing my nose and things like that. But they're on the other side, and in the same crib, Cole and Vincent look around. They get out of their bodies, and basically, they're going to try to uh, conquer the ancestors. Elijah then tells Marcel to give it to him now. He says no. Klaus says he can't give him the means to destroy his family. Marcel calls him out on the word my because it's not his family. He's not a part of his family. And again, he says it's not his family. It really hasn't been. Marcel says Klaus hasn't made Lucian what he was and says they are the villains in Lucian's story. And I don't think he's wrong. I mean, we know the beginning of the season, Lucian was not a bad guy necessarily. Klaus just made him more and more powerful and... He says the Michelsons kill, maim, torture in the name of family. He says for a while it gave him faith in those he loves, but he was a fool. And he says always and forever was an excuse to do what he wants. And he really doesn't believe that always and forever is a thing. And Elijah threatens him, says choose wisely. Marcel says fair enough. Then he says don't you get it? He will hurt him and says he will never be safe as long as he is alive. Marcel says he is his worst, and he trails off as Elijah rips his heart from behind, throws Marcel's body into water, and Klaus screams no because I do think Klaus really wanted to get through to Marcel. He didn't want to have to kill him, and Elijah did exactly what he didn't want him to do. I understand Elijah panicked, but it appears Marcel's dead, so... <sighs> At this point, I'm like, okay, Marcel's dead. What's really going to happen now? So in the spirit world, Cole is at Davina's headstone. Vincent chants, Davina is there and says it hurts, and Cole grabs onto her. Elijah and Marcel stand by the river. He asks Elijah what he did, and Klaus says he could have talked him down. And I really do think that Klaus was genuinely trying to help out Marcel. He was genuinely trying to show him that they are still there for him, that and that he still does have a place in the Michelson family, even though Marcel feels he doesn't. And... Elijah says that he couldn't watch Marcel kill the family. Elijah says that he was their foe, friend, and family once Davina died. And Elijah says he had no choice. Klaus asks if he believes that truly. Klaus walks away, and he really doesn't know if this was the best thing to do, if they really should have just killed Marcel. If they could have got him on his side, he feels he could have done more. Davina says it'll be a new start from the witches, so Vincent has to survive. She throws him out of the afterlife. He wakes, and uh, basically, she's trying to say that Vincent is not going to die. Vincent is going to be the new start. And Elijah then comes home to Haley, looking shell-shocked. He falls to his knees, and we saw these two getting a lot closer in the last episode. In this episode, they even get closer, we see. He cries and says, forgive me. She asks what happened. He says he killed Marcel. Haley is stunned that he actually did this. She goes to him, holds him tight while he cries, and you can tell that Elijah already feels terrible that he did this. He didn't want to have to do this, but he just didn't know what else to do. He was freaked out by the prophecy. He didn't know what Marcel really was capable of, and... <sighs> That's why he killed him. So Davina tells Cole to tell Josh not to be sad and that one good friend is enough. Now let me talk about Elijah, because I've talked about before that I think Elijah really does have this beast within him. Haley seems like the one that contained that, in the sense that Davina was that to Cole. That's Haley to Elijah. Haley's the one that can tame him. Haley's the one that really is the one that puts that beast to rest and... 
We know in the beginning of the season, Elijah was very savage. He was trying to find Haley in any way he could. Haley, of course, you know, wasn't there. He was trying to find her, and... <sighs> We remember how Elijah was then, and we know how much Elijah cares about his family. I think it just reiterates how the lengths that Elijah will go to defend his family. Even though he's not n nearly as much of a killer and savage as Klaus is, and or even as Lucian is... I do think that Elijah does care about his family. You know, we see that here. We see he really does love his family, and he'll do anything to protect them. I think that scene really does reiterate that. <sighs> So Davina tells Cole to tell Josh not to be sad and that one good friend is enough and that she's not really upset that, you know, Josh should not be upset about this. She says, tell Marcel thanks for being her family. He says he will, but then she says she doesn't know who to say goodbye to, how to say goodbye to him because she doesn't think she's going to be able to. I mean... She already said what she needed to say to him, but again, he wasn't there to hear her say it. And that's the saddest part of this, is that she really did say goodbye to them last week, but she didn't get a chance to actually, you know, he didn't get a chance to see it. And basically, we then see um, Cole says he was dead for ages and woke angry, and then he saw her leaving the church, and he says she looked like the world was on his sh her shoulders. Then she brushed against some dead flowers and brought them back to life, then smiled. He says that cracked him open, and that was the first time he felt alive in ages. He holds her tight. Cole says he loves her. She smiles and kisses him. Davina says she loves him too. Then he wakes in the tomb, starts crying. Davina activates the bomb Vincent brought, and Josh, Vincent, and Cole run out of the crypt. Cole says, give them hell, Davina Claire, and Davina's officially dead. I mean, she's dead. There's no way that she's coming back, and it's very sad to see, but she's dead. They're not getting her back now. There's no way that they were going to be able to do that. They're now blown up, um... <sighs> you know, where the ancestors were, basically, now they're gonna start over, and I do think it's a good setup, it makes sense why Davina had to die, I think it's closing out the first, you know, the original witches, and now bring in people like Vincent and Freya, who I think are gonna be more of the, uh, they're gonna be the new starts, and she chants that things begin to break apart, there's a glow, and there she explodes into light as many crypts in the cemetery erupt into flame, and... Klaus then stares down at the street. Haley comes up to him, and he says he prefers to be alone, and mocks her defending him. Haley says that Freya showed him what she saw, and so the prophecies may not have been wrong yet, and um, have not been wrong yet, and that the prophecy is definitely going to come true. She says he must forgive Elijah since he always is forgiven, and Eli Klaus says no matter what he did, Klaus says that he sounds like Cam that she sounds like Cammy, and... I don't think it's trying to say that Haley is like Cammy. I think it's trying to show that Haley really is going to be the, you know, good. Like, Cammy was there. She understood Klaus. Haley understands Klaus just as well. And Klaus walks away. And at Cammy's grave, smoke blows across the headstone. Kenny asks Vincent if his plan worked. He says the ancestors are cut off and they're free. Vincent thanks him. Kenny says it's been months and he felt like he lost his mind. He says he felt something in the darkness waiting for him. He thought it was his head. Vincent says no. Kenny thanks him for trusting him with the truth. Haley comes to Elijah. He says he had to do it to be sure. And, uh... I like that Kenny is now more aware of what's going on. Like I said, it really just seemed like he's going to play a much more major role next season. So Haley comes to Elijah, says he had to do it to be sure. She says Klaus knows that. She says he has to forgive himself, and he just stares upset. Elijah turns to her. He's got tears in his eyes. He walks past her, then turns back, grabs her into her kiss. They kiss passionately, and these two are definitely officially together. It seems like these two, they're now going to be together. It's going to be the thing. And I really think a lot of this was, you know, we were really setting up that. We were really setting up these two getting together. I think we've been setting up for three seasons. It feels very rewarding, and I'm glad that they are now together. So Klaus is at Marcel's place. When Josh and Vincent come in, he tells them Marcel is dead. Josh says he didn't take the serum because of him, and Vincent says Marcel wanted them to think that. He says Marcel took it at the moment he gave it to them. He didn't hesitate. He says the Michaelsons are in for a hell of a surprise. We see Marcel in the muddy river water smiling. He's alive, and Marcel's alive, which means that the prophecy could come true, and that is how this episode ends, and like I said, I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen in the finale next week. Really, I don't, and this episode was incredible. I really loved it. I mean, a lot of it was very sad, definitely, because like I said, a lot of it was Klaus trying to get through to Marcel, just trying to show that he's still on their side and that Marcel shouldn't turn against them like this, but Marcel really thinks it's bullshit. Anything that Klaus says, you know, in terms of them trusting him or him being on their side, he just doesn't really see it that way anymore. He doesn't really feel he has a place in the Michelson's life anymore, and he feels he's just going to keep, that they're just going to keep uh, ruining things, they're just going to keep ignoring him, and he's going to continue to be the outsider that he really feels he is, and I think it's very, you can really understand why Marcel wants to turn against Klaus like he does, and I think they definitely showed that very well here, I really enjoyed that, um, 
Let's talk about the prophecy, though, because obviously that prophecy is definitely going to come true. Now that uh, Marcel is a we now now that Marcel is not just alive, he's also just as powerful as Lucian was. We know he drank that serum. There is very well you that prophecy could very well come true, but I don't know if it's going to because is Elijah really going to die? Is Klaus really going to die? I don't really know if the show would go into that territory. But Julie Pleck and uh, um, Michael Narducki they both said that this finale is gruesomer than what happened last season. We know what happened last season wasn't as big, and that really makes me think that this finale is going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. There's going to be a lot of blood, a lot of killing, and I do think that someone else is definitely going to die. Now, who's that going to be? I don't really know, but I do think there's going to be one more major death. Will it be Marcel? I don't really think that's what's going to happen. I think Marcel's going to be the villain even next season. We'll have to see what happens, though. Um... Is there a way for them to neutralize Marcel? I don't really know. It looks like Rebecca is back next week, and she's going to kind of get through to Marcel. We'll have to see if she actually does, though, because it really seems like there is no one to get through to Marcel at this point. The Marcel has made his case. He understands. He basically has figured out what side he's on, and there's really no one to get through to him. It seems like, you know, uh, like I said, Rebecca might be that person, but I don't really know. Maybe Rebecca is. Maybe she's not. I don't really know who's going to be able to get through to Marcel. We'll have to see what happens with that. Kenny is now aware of what's going on. I think he definitely is going to team up with Vincent, we're going to see what happens with that. That's going to be very interesting if Vincent's going to be able to start this new, um, you know, now that they've conquered the ancestors and everything, or is Vincent going to be able to take over for Davina? Is that really going to happen? We'll have to see if that really ends up working. I like seeing Elijah and Haley together. I think it makes sense. You could really see Haley is, like I said, the person that really neutralizes Elijah, makes him understand more of who he is. I think it's, there's some really good stuff there. I definitely really do enjoy that. Um... But I really don't know, like I said, what's going to happen next, you know, in the finale. I don't think, I don't know what's going to happen. I know we're in for a really crazy, brutal finale, definitely. And like I said, I think we really did understand both Klaus and Elijah and Marcel's points, which is one of the reasons why I love this episode so much is because it wasn't one side at all. You really could get behind with both Klaus and Marcel, and I really did love that. But over, guys, I you guys saw this episode. I absolutely love this episode. Re also, a very good goodbye to Davina. Very sad to see Danielle Campbell exit the show, but I think it makes sense why she had to leave you know we are now closing Davina's part and beginning Vincent's arc he's gonna play a much more bigger role next season we'll have to see what happens with that but over guys so much guys saw this episode love to your thoughts and I cannot wait for next week's finale it is gonna be huge it's gonna be crazy and I don't know um what the outcome is going to be. I don't know who's going to die. I don't know if this prophecy from Marcel is actually going to come true. I mean, we know that the one is they're all going to fall one by foe, one by friend, and one by family. Now, who that is, we don't know. Who the foe, who the friend is, who the foe is, and who the family is. I think Marcel definitely is part of that prophecy, though, and I think definitely the friend part is Marcel. Foe, we don't know, but the family part, we'll have to see what happens with that. Cole's also think he's in danger. I mean, I heard know a lot of people are thinking Cole's going to die. I don't think Cole's going to die. We'll have to see what happens with that. Um, Cole, obviously, he wants to walk away from the Michaelsons. He's clearly not on their side, but is he going to be able to, if he's going to have to get back on their side? I mean, I don't really know. We'll have to see. I can, again, I can understand why Vincent and, uh, Josh, they're working with Marcel. I can understand why Cole wants to work with them as well. But are they going to be able? Is you know, is Marcel going to be more powerful than them? We'll ask you what happens with that. Also, again, what is Aurora's state? We don't really know. It sounds like Aurora is dead from what they're saying, but we still don't really know what's going to happen with that. Overall, guys, I just hope we have a really satisfying finale. I'm sure we will. It's going to be really crazy next week. I can't wait to see what happens with that. It looks brutal, honestly. It really does. I'm glad. I'm glad Rebecca's coming back though. Definitely. Let me know if you guys saw this episode. Love to your thoughts on it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for Ants of Shield, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.